everyone, I'm Sarah, and welcome to Friday Fun Day. I have a really interesting and fun project for us to do today. It's easy, and it's versatile. So we're going to make the energetic phone bag. This is a super easy phone case to make, alternating rows of single crochets and double crochets. You can choose a button, you can choose your rings, you can choose to add whatever chain you want, or just make a chain for your bag. It can be a wristlet, a handle, and even a shoulder strap. So it's so versatile. Choose your yarn, choose your embellishments, and choose your button and everything else, and make it personal for you. Now, you can find this free crochet pattern on my blog, and as always, I'll put that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. So the things that we need, it looks a little overwhelming on this table, but don't worry. We're going to talk about options, like I said in the intro. The first thing I want to talk to you about, of course, is the cotton yarn. 100% peaches and cream, and the yarn that I chose is called Stripey. Now, one thing I discovered when I picked up some of these is that they are only two ounces, not the usual three and a half to four ounces we we'll usually find on some of these cotton yarns. It is 100% cotton. It's also a lot softer than some of our other cottons. And I've got several here. Here's one that's got green and yellow in it. This is colors of beige, which I really like. This one's kind of a red, white, and blue. And this one has lots of pink in it. The one that I chose to make the um, phone case in is called Energetic Pink. And it's kind of more of a melon and brighter pink opposed to this one where it has a little bit softer pink. But again, 100% cotton. You're going to need about one and a half ounces. And you might need a little more if you decide to make your strap long and make it out of the cotton. And we'll talk more about those options in just a minute. All right, so you need about an ounce and a half of a 100% cotton medium weight number four yarn. And we're going to be stitching with our H hook today, which is a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. You're going to need a pair of scissors, you're going to need a needle, and then you're going to need a button because we make a loop to put the button on because we want to make sure we can close the top of that bag. And of course, I've got some button choices out here. It's up to you. Anywhere from a half inch to an inch, you can adjust the size of that loop if you have a bigger button, okay? All right, so those are just the basics. Now let's talk about some of the options that you can use on your phone case. Now I have a couple of chains here, and I think it's really fun to add a chain really long, maybe make it into a shoulder bag or a shorter chain to make it a wristlet. It's kind of up to you. Now I found all of this stuff at either Walmart or my Hobby Lobby, okay? <clears throat> This is just some chain. I don't really know the sizing of it. I just grabbed two different ones. This one is a little bit smaller, has rounded chains. This one is oval, and I really like this one. This one gives me a little bit of a hippie vibe, and I like that. Okay, and so it's up to you the distance. If you're going to make it smaller, you're going to need a little pair of pliers to open up one of those rings so you can make your chain smaller. All right, so, but you may not want to use a chain. You may want to just chain a long strap or short strap, and I'll, I'll show you all of that also at the end of the video. Now, here's some options that you can use to attach your straps. This is some of the smaller D-rings. They're one-inch ones, and these are one-inch circle rings. They're both metals, and I really do recommend that you use a metal fastener and not a plastic because a phone can be a little bit heavy for a small bag, and we don't want to lose our phones. Okay, we also have some clips here. Uh, this one is just a big round clip, and it has this fun little clip, and I really like it because it's easy to use. And then these ha are metal ones with just your basic clips. There we go. They're sturdy. They're just not as fun, and, and to me, they're just not as sturdy as those. And then I found these, and I thought they were really pretty. I'm going to open this up so you can see it, because that plastic, it's hard to see. 
They're really pretty. They're a little heart and just that simple clip. And it's a very tight clip and I like that because that's gonna hold really sturdy. And you could use this with some of these D-rings or this to attach your strap to your phone bag. And it's another way where you may want a strap that's long today, but tomorrow you might want your strap shorter. So you can make a couple straps. All right, and these are just some things that you can gather up. You may have some of these. I had these rings already. And I always have D rings around because I'm always making belts and things like that. All right, so you can grab up some of these things. Hit your local Walmart and Hobby Lobby. Joann's carries these, so does Michael's. Anywhere where they sell craft supplies, you'll be able to find all of these things. And the peaches and cream I purchased at Walmart, just in case you're wanting to know. And they had quite a few of them this time when I went in there. I was very happy about that. All right, so let's get started on our Friday Fun Day phone case project. We'll be starting at the bottom of the case and then working our way up, all right? So we're going to begin with our yarn, of course. Make our slip knot. And we're going to chain 13 chains. And I want to remind you to chain this initial 13 chains just a little bit loose because you don't want the bottom of your bag to pucker in. All right, so we're going to chain 13 chains just a little bit loose. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. All right, so we've chained thirteen. Now we're going to place a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. So yarn over, one, two, three, four. And then we're going to place a double crochet in each of the stitches working across. Now remember, this chain three at the beginning counts as one of our stitches. And we started in the fourth chain from the hook and we're stitching a double crochet in each of our stitches across. We stitched a double crochet in each of our chains across. And in this last stitch, we're going to stitch another double crochet. So there are two stitches in that last chain. All right, <clears throat> so we have our chain three here that we skipped that counts as one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, because we placed two in that last chain. So we have 12 double crochets. Now we're going to turn our work, and we're going to work on the opposite or other side of our chain. And we're going to stitch a double crochet in each of those chains across. And of course our chains are stitches. And when we get to that last stitch, we're going to stitch two double crochets in that last stitch. The end should curl up just a little because we moved around to the opposite side and then your stitches should all line up. <clears throat> so we've stitched 10 stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then in this last stitch, we're going to stitch two double crochets. One and two. And that gives us 12. So we have 12 on this side and 12 on this side. Now we're going to join to the chain three of the chain three on this side 
with a slip stitch and we're just going to chain one. All right, so we have a total of 24 stitches. We have 12 and 12. We joined to our chain three and chained one. So we have 24 double crochets. Now before we do round two, I wanna go ahead and weave this tail in because we're going to be making it tall and it'll be harder to get in there and weave it in. So I'm just going to put it on my needle and just weave that in. That way we don't have to worry about it. Now if you want to wait till you're all done and weave it in, you certainly can. But this way I don't have to worry about it since we're not going to be doing any color changes. The only one I'll have to worry about is the one at the end. There we go. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of push it this way because this is going to be the outside of our bag. And what we're going to do now is that chain one does not count as a stitch and we're going to stitch a single crochet in each of those double crochets. One single crochet in each of the double crochets working all the way around. Whoops. And we'll just move right around the end there. You can see how it curls a little bit. That's what we want it to do. And of course, we'll just push it out because this is the outside of our bag. And we'll just work our way on around and join back to our first single crochet. I have stitched one single crochet in each of the double crochets around. So I have 24 single crochets. I'm going to join to that first single crochet with a slip stitch and chain one. Now for row three, we're just going to repeat what we just did. We'll stitch one single crochet in each of the stitches around. So now we're stitching one single crochet in each of the single crochets working all the way around and then join back to our first single crochet. I stitched one single crochet in each of the single crochets around, so again we have 24 single crochets. We're going to join to the first single crochet with a slip stitch and this time we're going to chain three. One, two, and three. This chain three counts as our first double crochet. And what we're going to do for row four is we're going to stitch a double crochet in each of those single crochets around. one double crochet in each of the single crochets working around and then joining back to our chain three. On our double crochet rows, our chain three will always count as our first stitch. On our single crochet rows, the chain one does not count as a stitch. I stitched a double crochet in each of those single crochets, so I have 24 double crochets. We're going to join to the chain three with a slip stitch and chain one. All right, so now we're going to just stitch a single crochet in each of those double crochets. One single crochet in each of the double crochets around. We'll join back to our first single crochet 
and then we'll repeat for two rows of single crochet. And every row for this project is going to have 24 stitches. We're not adding or subtracting any stitches. So I'm going to stitch two rows of single crochet, just like we did for row two and three. I stitched two rows of single crochet. Each row has 24 single crochets. On the second row, when we joined to our first single crochet, we chained three instead of chaining one, because now we're going to do another row of double crochet. And again, that chain three counts as our first, so we go to the next stitch and stitch one double crochet in each of those 24 single crochets. And I think now you're starting to see how the pattern for our phone case or phone bag works. So I'm stitching one double crochet in each of the single crochets around. Whoops, there we go. And once we get around, we'll join to that chain three with a slip stitch. I have completed row six. And I think now you can see how our repeat rows are going to work. And so what you're going to do is you're going to continue to repeat row four, row five, and row six four more times. You'll do two rows a single and a double for four more times for the length of our bag. And that will get you up to row 18. Once you have repeated the two single crochets and the double four more times, you get a bag that's approximately six and a half inches. If your phone is longer or you just want more room at the top, you certainly can add more rows. What we're going to do now is we're going to add the row and add the loop for our button, okay? So we're still doing single crochets and we're going to single crochet. I'm going to go ahead and do my chain one here. And we're going to single crochet in the first 18 stitches. All right, so one, two, I single crocheted in the first 18 stitches and that should get me to the center of the back of my bag. Now we're going to chain 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right, so now what you're going to do is we're going to form the button loop. All right, now it's real important that you make your loop fit your button. And so what I do is I just sort of set it there and give me an idea of how much room I need for that button. If you made a bigger button, or if you're using a bigger button, you can do more chains, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna skip the first six or eight or 10, depending on the size of your button. One, two, three, four, five, six, I'm going to go eight because my button's a little bit bigger and I'm going to slip stitch in that chain and then slip stitch in those remaining stitches back to my bag. There we go. All right. <clears throat> And now we're going to single crochet in that same stitch and then single crochet in those last six. Three, four, five, and there we go, six. And then I'm just going to slip stitch in that first single crochet. And I'm going to go ahead and tie this off.
and then I can use my needle to weave this in. But before I do this, I want to talk to you a little bit about the loop. Okay, so let me show you. My loop is going to sit here. My button is going to slide right through my loop with no problem. We'll put that button on in just a minute. But if you're using, say, a much bigger button and you might want a little bit more room in there, make your chain a little bit longer so that you can make your loop a little bit longer before you start slip stitching back to your bag. If you're using a tinier button, you may want a smaller hole, okay? And then you can start your loop sooner. All right, so it's kind of up to the size of the button that you need. Now this is a half inch button, I believe. So I chained 12, I slip stitched in the eighth chain, and then slip stitched back to my bag, all right? because I wanted my button to fit through nicely. Now I'm going to weave this end in and tidy up my bag. Now before we talk about handles, let's go ahead and add our button. And so we're going to take our loop and bring it down where we think it should be. I'm going to take my needle and mark that. <clears throat> and then I'm going to make a loop going through some of those stitches. It's real important that you go through the stitches and not through the holes to make your button be, um, you know, secure. Now I have four button or uh, yeah, button holes, so I'm going to go in two of them. If you just have two, that's fine. But since I have four, and I'm going to go down below in the stitches below. go and then I'll go up through those and you want to make sure whether it's two or one that you're going through stitches and not holes all right we want to make sure that button is on there securely now I'm going back and forth you could do this one with an X if you wanted to it's totally up to you how you want to sew your button on all right so now I'm going to go inside the bag there And then I'm just going to take my hook and pull this one through to the inside. All right, and we're going to go ahead and cut that. And now I'm going to just sew, uh, tie my button on, not sew my button on. There we go. And I like to do three, and that last one I like to do that little wrap over button knot. Push that down. We want our button to be on there securely because we don't want our phone coming out of our phone bag. Okay. Now we need to make decisions on our handles. So I have decided that I want to use this more oval of a chain and I'm going to make a long handle so that it can go over my shoulder. I'm going to use these two little rings to hold the chain. That way I can adjust that chain with the hook part if I want to. All right, so I'm going to show you this first and then I'm going to show you how to make a chain handle or strap if you want to. All right, either way you're going to want to add a ring. Um, let me grab these so I can show you what we're talking about again. Some sort of a ring to add on your handle whether you crochet it or not. Oh, here's the D-rings. Okay? Because you want to be able to adjust that handle. So the first thing I'm going to do is sew these on. So I want to make sure they're even on the sides. And I'm going to do it similar to the way I do the button. I'm going to go in here. and It's going to go this way, so I'm going to make a loop. I'm going to grab this. And I'm going to go through this several times because I want that to be on there really secure. I don't want this coming off. All right, so that's on there nice and snug. I'm going to go to the inside. 
I'm going to grab my crochet hook and pull this other string to the inside. There we go. And then we'll tie this on the same way that we did the button. We'll put three knots. One. Two. <clears throat> Should have left a little bit longer of a loop on that side, but it'll be okay because I'm going to pull that through. There we go. And tie that securely. All right, so I've got that one on that side. Now I'm going to do the other side. So I have both of my hooks sewn on. And remember, any kind of a D-ring or a circle or whatever you're going to use, you can stitch it on exactly the same. And I have opened the end of my chain. That's because all I'm going to do here is just clip it on those rings. But let's say I wanted my purse a little bit shorter. I didn't want my phone to like bang on the back of my back or something. I could... Go ahead and clip the other end on there, that ring out of the way there. And then I would have a little bit shorter of a bag. And I don't want to cut it because I may want it to be longer to wear over my shoulder. All right, but what if we want to just go ahead and make a chain instead of a chain chain made out of metal, we want to make a chain out of yarn. Let me show you what you can do. So what you can do, if you want to just make the strap or handle for your bag out of just yarn, you can just chain it as long as you want it. And I suggest about 100 chains if you want a longer bag. But of course, it's up to you how many chains that you want to make for your strap. So just make as many chains as the length that you want. Once you've chained as many chains as you want, you're just going to turn and stitch slip stitches down the chain, all the way down. And this is going to thicken up that chain and make it just a little bit more sturdy. One slip stitch in each of the chains, working back down the chain. I have slip stitched all the way back down my yarn chain. I'm going to cut my yarn. And I'm going to show you how to attach it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and tie this off. And there are three different ways that you can do this. You can put it through just the one side and we'll tuck this in and pretend like we don't see that. And it becomes a wristlet. Another thing you can do is put it through both sides like we do with the chain that is metal. And you join the two sides together and you have a nice handle. <clears throat> the other thing you can do, of course, is to make the chain a whole lot longer and then you can make it into a shoulder strap. It's real important though that you do put the two together and it's real simple to tie them. You just put the two ends together and do a quick knot, okay? <clears throat> I really like the idea of a wristlet with this and what I would do probably is just go ahead and tie these two together like this so that it could be a wristlet and not use this over here. Just pretend like it's not there and we'll just tuck that in. All right, so you can make a wristlet, you can make a handle, or you can make a long shoulder strap.